all the airline operators. The ideal situation would be prioritizing even the passengers, but I don't think they would like that. So really very low turnaround time, refueling, brake cooling. These are the aspects of um, designing into the product, how quick you can refuel, how efficient your brakes are, how quickly the it's logistics, quite a lot of logistics, but not the built into the initial design stage. And of course, very low servicing time and no special requirement for use of runways. See how many airfields we have in this country, about 400 of them. Money. Everything is run on operating costs. Good aerodynamics means lower drag. Fuel efficient engines means lower fuel consumption, good structural concept means lower weight, parts, how much we know, we know how much we pay for mid standard gear, really things to be built into future aircraft and a country which is growing so fast, we need about 1200 aircraft up to uh, 2026, this is the way to develop the aircraft of the future. We are all praised for this brilliant pilot, but yet I would like to credit the equipment manufacturers that two engines after ingesting the birds still were developing I think 30% in one engine and 15% power in the other engine and uh, within three minutes the uh, aircraft came down and he could operate his flaps could operate the slacks, they had virtually a soft landing on water. And this is the technology which was built, built into the aircraft, of course, a superb pilot, very well trained. And incidentally, I have got an article which relates to planning and this aircraft incidents, planning for, air, for aircraft design and production, which I am going to circulate in my company and anybody else who wants it. So. This is what is in the aircraft of the future. Collision warning systems, artificial in intelligence, of course, fly-by-wire, but we are all clear, terrain avoidance. Everything possible to reduce the risk to the crew and to their passengers. This is really good, discipline, well thought of. You can't, you have to plan for these kind of things. And I think this uh, Airbus, designers and the people and the pilot who flew this, they were very well prepared. Last few years, we have taken a lot of initiatives in this country on multifunction displays, head-up displays, navigation systems. We have to do more work on voice activated systems, collision warning and the training devices and simulators. We started doing simulators in this country about eight, nine years ago. Really, this will reduce the workload on the pilots. I mentioned about smart materials earlier, where materials under the effect of electricity magnetism are able to work as sensors. They become smart skins, they become self-healing. You can do health monitoring with them, you can do vibration control with them. Very, very looking forward to uh, you know, reap the results of our investments in this field on the helicopter side for vibration control, for noise control and for health monitoring. I think we are getting very close to the prototype models. This is the way for small aircraft, for smart aircraft. What the enablers are in the civil aircraft side are new technologies. Nobody can wait six, seven years and uh, look at the development, what is done at Boeing, Airbus, Embraer, Bombardier. Cycle times get shorter and shorter. We have virtual prototyping, we have CFPs, and new technologies are introduced. So ultimately, aircraft gets certified and available very quickly. Nobody can wait seven, ten years. Then, of course, systems, cost effectiveness by use of SCOTs is very, very important. Computer-aided manufacturing, abundance in aircraft, abundance and capacity, flexible manufacturing systems so that you can change your product line very quickly, lean initiatives which we have learnt 
and my company is putting them in place since 2003. It's so simple a concept to do, but so difficult to get the mindset doing. But the results are so satisfying. Partnerships to share cost and risk, of course, profits is not an ugly word. So this is to my friend in the composite side, NHL and elsewhere in India. We know how to do composites, but we have to get some new technologies in resin films, in resin transfers, in co-curing, in fiber placement, and of course, increase the rate to maybe 7, 10 aircraft a month, 2 to 3 sets a week. And look at the size of this. Actually, it's, you know, we have seven wonders of the world, but being an aviation person for, as Dr. Nair said, for sometimes I'm hesitant to say 39 years. When I look at these parts, when you look at how the A380 is built, you look at that and your mind says, so this is man, this is the technology what he's created. It's not metal, but it's composites. Huge structures, bulkhead skins. In fact, making it a challenge, transportation is another something to be seen how they are done. This is a field where we have done well on the light side and well, nothing ever stops, but on the large aircraft, this is where work is what we will have to do. I talked about this virtual prototyping. You can see build, test and refine from the physical pr prototype because the old to make four aircraft, six aircraft, possibly you can make less and you have virtual prototype, you still have to, would have to fly. But you have a plane which you can virtually conceptualize what is in it, what is it, how is it going to perform, how this system fit inside, what the performance will be, and you have a much faster design cycle time, faster to market. I, I would not give advice, but I could give a suggestion to all my colleagues in the aerospace field Really, design cycle times cannot be, cannot be fired. And we must start thinking as a nation in few months, a year, few days, few weeks, two years, three years, but not seven to ten years. Again, speed. This is technologies where from CAD tools, you go to systems and measurements and automation where, where the manual content comes down, repeatability goes up, output goes up, abundance goes up, scales of production go up. We have new trends, we have jigless assemblies, a lot of laser get used, laser technologies get used, modular jigs. The old way of thinking is needs to go. Other day I was surprised, I said, how do we make big structures? They're all farmed out. We lost the technology. But I suppose it really doesn't matter. We would let the old way go. These are some of the areas where the industry in India and the design houses in India would need to work upon. We all need to have visions. Without visions and goals, how do you plan? So, on civil aircraft and also military aircraft, Automated processes, design and simulation, virtual prototyping to save time, to test out your results. Data information, product data, not manual but using systems. Then rapid modifications of the process plans, modular manufacturing, and of course self-diagnosis and the real machine tools. We are good at the front end, but this is another aircraft support does not stop at the delivery stage, but it continues. It is tracking the performance of the aircraft, 